What is up and welcome back to another episode of Insurance Influencers where we find power freaking players and influencers in our industry to jump on, educate our audience, and to bring some valuable content. My buddy Jeff Root is one of the best at doing that. Dude, thank you for being on, man. Of course, of course, anything. I love it, buddy. Uh, dude, I've always been, even before we knew each other, I was the dude lurking and listening to everything you put out. You know, and, and you didn't even know it. Uh, this was pre pre YouTube and all this stuff, you know. But I was I was the dude. Uh, every time I got on a plane, I put on your podcast. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah, that was uh, man. That was like four or five years ago, I think, when I first came out yeah. with that Modern Life Insurance Selling Podcast. I haven't done it for a couple of years, but uh, I'm gonna fire that thing back up pretty soon here. That's awesome, man. I think it's been fantastic. Uh, Jeff is the owner of Digital BGA, uh, the host of the Modern Life Insurance Selling Podcast we were just talking about, and the author of The Digital Life Insurance Agent. Uh, he also talks a lot about five business owner fundamentals of life insurance agent, which I'm sure we'll touch on. Um, w when did you start to, you've been doing phone sales and, and you know building out sites and SEO for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like everybody, I, I got recruited into the industry by Northwestern Mutual as a financial advisor and uh, ran through my personal network and ended up buying a batch of leads and selling one over the phone. The guy didn't want to meet with me, even though he's 15 minutes away. <laughs> yeah, and so he's like, do, do we need to even meet? Just send me the application. I was like, all right. I got it back, placed in force. was the easiest seller ever made. And I was like, all right, this is what I'm going to focus on. <laughs> you know? Wow. And so that was, you know, that was in 2007. And okay. uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And so I just started working leads. I was, you know, back then it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Like every lead company was good. Um, and, uh, you know. Why, why, why do you think that was? Yeah, you know, so people were going online and there wasn't, there wasn't much competition. There wasn't many people advertising for life when I was selling life insurance those days. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I even put up a website and within two months, I think I posted like 10 blog posts, you know, not, I didn't know what I was doing. And then I started getting leads, people finding me and these were great leads. And that's kind of how I kind of got my, you know, started getting my taste of marketing down. So um, you know, as far as why it was so good, um, I think around 2008, that's when ping posting technology came out mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, where then those lead vendors, instead of selling direct to agent and dealing with, with all that, they started sending them through ping trees, which sells to the highest bidder and sells multiple times. And then it just yeah. diluted the quality of a lead. And so it's been refreshing yeah. the past couple of years seeing like, you know, your, your lead company and a bunch of others out there just really doing agents right and not going through ping trees, you know? Thank you, buddy. Yeah, for sure. They, uh, yeah, I mean, with those, with those, with the ping posts and everything else, they're like, they're selling to each other and it's like a frenzy and a bidding market and you can, who knows how many times the leads actually resold. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, after 2008, everything changed, but before that, man, those, those that was the heyday. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have you ever, have you ever taken a disc assessment on yourself? No. You know why I ask? Because I see you as like someone, and I don't say it's about many people, you have, amb you, you, you have ambition and drive, you know, aggression, right? That, that's a D. I is like, I'm influential, I'm social, which, you know, you're both of those. S is like service oriented, which obviously you are. C is like, I'm consistent, I'm like a computer guy, you know, I'm going to put in the work, data. I kind of see you as being good in a, in a lot of versatile ways. You know, you're selling over the phone, you're running a company, you're scaling a business, you know, you're doing a podcast, you're, you're an influencer, you're a face, um, a personality, but you're also, you know, have taught yourself all these amazing marketing secrets behind the scenes. You know, what do you, what do you think of that? I, I think it describes me to a T for sure. I'm, yeah. I wrote, I'm writing it down right now to look into that. <laughs> I've never yeah, heard it's that before. A, it's a personality, uh, like personality behavior test. You know, we, we, we do it with, with, uh, we actually have every one of our salespeople take a disc before we hire them. And because you want salespeople that are like high D's and high I's, uh, if they're service oriented, they should be in my support department. If they're, you know, a high C computer consistency, all that, they should be in my, you know, they should be an engineer, but high D and high I, they're typically a better salesperson. You wouldn't believe this, but when I do Myers-Briggs, I always identify as an introvert. So seriously yeah yeah for some reason that's you know maybe that's wow. why maybe that's why i podcast because nobody's in the room yeah I don't have to be on video <laughs> you know i wrote a book again yeah. that's completely hands off you know but um yeah it's you know something people wouldn't think of 
No, t t totally. Is that something, has that been a, not a struggle, but do I mean, you put yourself out there. You've got a Facebook group. You're doing live videos and videos. You're hosting the, you know, the, 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 the Digital Life Insurance Agent Mastermind, you know, I mean, the, the conference now. I mean, um, you're all over the place, you know. Is that something like you've had to force yourself to do, being, a, you know, th maybe an introvert, you know? Definitely. No, absolutely. Um, you know, it all started when um, I joined this location independent entrepreneur group. Um, back in I think 2012 and I made a trip to Bangkok and I met all these like ninja marketers and um, these guys doing just crazy things that I didn't think were possible right and that's yep. where I kind of got the idea is like at the time podcasts were like rising and these you know I saw a couple presentations on podcasts and I was like all right I could do this you know yeah. and so that's where I did the podcast and I went back the next year to Bangkok again these guys they live around the world. I mean, they're just like you and me, you know, um, but they're, you know, um, they're, they're just crazy into their work doing these, um, you know, little known things that work and they kind of share it totally. in, in this conference. And then they said, you know what, right now, if you want to build authority, you got to write a book. I was like, all right. Okay. So I wrote That's the book. Good. Yeah. And so when you say the whole, the whole, this thing, it makes, you know, it makes it cause I'm always diving into information and yeah. then applying it to insurance, you know, and not just to like that part of it, but to, you know, selling it over the phone. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of different strategies that are pulled out of the insurance industry. Cause I mean, uh, what's the, uh, November 5th, Nailba, which is a BGA um, conference that's in the next couple of days or so. It's just right up the street in Dallas from me. I'm in Austin and I keep getting phone calls. Hey, are mm. you going? I'm like, you going? I'm like, no. It's not my thing. I don't get any value from it, you know. Yeah. You know, just like these these old ways of, of insurance. I just I just don't identify with with that. Um, so, you know, yes. I think that's that's kind of the way I'm I'm kind of progressing is I'm just pulling yeah. information from outside and uh, not really doing what's I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? I mean, well, yeah. I mean, you you were you were making digital phone sales sexy before it was, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, and now everyone wants to do it, you know, and, and, and so I've, I've kind of noticed that as a trend over the last several years, we'll put out content and honestly, the most sought after thing that, that, that always comes up is telesales, you know, it's phone sales, it's, hey, I want to stay in my pajamas and make a million bucks a year, you know, like Anthony Martin, yeah. um, you know, it's just like incredible. What, what, what uh, was it, was it just the guy said, I don't want you to come to my house and you sold it and you're like, maybe I can do this again. You know, was that it? That's exactly it. I don't like doing my Monday, my Monday night cold calls, and then you know, yeah. the, the whole project 100 going through all that, and um, just I just didn't like it. And so once I just you know once that happened, I was like, see, ya, I'm done. Like I left yeah. within within a couple of weeks. Um, I, I was gone once I sold a couple more, and wow. uh, and then I just picked up other contracts. I, at the time, a AIG was the big one and um, just wrote a bunch of AIG for a couple of years. I mean, I really term, didn't. right? Yeah, yeah, mo yeah, 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 almost all term. I didn't even sell a final expense policy. Like, I didn't even know it existed back then. Um, <laughs> so. S s sell term life.com, right? I mean. Exactly, my wife came up with that name, by the way. Dude, that's a great name, great name. I'll actually, I, I do research on stuff all the time. I'm, I'm like a research junkie, and I, I kind of like to know what other people are doing, you know? And that site comes up all the time. Cool. Good. Yeah. Good. It's still working. I just got to put some more effort into it, you know? Totally. I'm with you. Uh, dude, wh what was the inspiration for the book? And, and the book again, The Digital Life Insurance Agent. Yep. You can find it on Amazon. Um, inspiration yeah. for the book was I kept getting so many emails and so many people wanting me to mentor them. Mm. And I just don't have time to mentor people. And I'm not a Cody Askins that's going to go to people and do all these presentations because I, it's not, I, it's not my thing, you know? I so yeah. I just put everything that I knew about marketing insurance, generating leads, selling insurance over the phone, the processes, the scripting, the, um, you know, what's working and, and how I do it just as yeah. so people can have the baseline. And so then I could just say, Hey, just send them a link instead of, Hey, I, I don't mentor people, but, Literally follow the book. That's what you mentioned, Anthony Martin. That's what Anthony Martin did. He followed the book, you know? Wow. So, yeah. Wow. How, 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 how long ago did you write the book? Uh, July 2016 is when it came out. Okay. Okay. I remember it had been out for several years, but that's good. 
That's really good. Uh, and, 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 you, and you've noticed it, um, but you know, um, you know, someone says, you know, if you, if you want to get some attention, be an expert, you know, uh, bring, bring, I've actually, the reason I'm, I'm asking about the book for a second, totally random, sure. is I was in the car, um, I think I was listening to a podcast or an audio book or something. Um, I think it was today. It was today or yesterday. My brain's always so scattered. And I literally had the thought, you know, I'm, I'm always talking about sales and building a sales team and everything we're doing. And I'm like, maybe I should write a book, you know? Yeah. It was hard to get me to sit down for a day and write a book, but I think I should write a book, you know? For sure. I mean, it's, I'll tell you how the process went for me. It was, I wrote the yeah. first chapter, I outlined the rest of the book, and then I hired somebody to kind of be my behind the scenes, like help me through this, help me formulate my thoughts, basically um, interview me for Skype calls, and then, oh, jot, wow. and, and then jot all, and then she just took notes on everything that I said as I was just brain dumping. And then I take <laughs> those notes, do some copy and paste and some typing on it. That's, that's how I got wow. it. So I'm not a book writer, but that's kind of, yeah. That's what I did, you know, um, because I can't sit in front of a screen and, and, and type thousands yeah. of words at a time and, and try and, cause my thoughts, they happen right now. I'll forget my thought, you know, if I'm trying to type it out. Exactly. Dude. I mean, that, that is the, that is the mind of an entrepreneur. Like we, someone could be, someone could like hate our guts and two hours later we're like, who were they again? You know? Yep. Yeah. So true. Uh, how long did it take you to write the book? Uh, three to four months. So yeah, three months and then four months once it got to formatting and I had to do a book cover and stuff and get it into Amazon. So I did create space on Amazon. So they print it as somebody orders it. They just print it up. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. Dude, that sounds so simple. They go through like a massive publishing company and everything else. Right. Then, you know, buying, committing to printing a, you know, a couple thousand books and then trying to sell them. Yeah. It's yeah. You're not going to make any money selling books, I'm guessing. Exactly. I didn't do it to sell the books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't care if I'm losing money by doing that. Yeah. Right. It, and and what, why would you say you did it for a couple reasons, you know, um, I would imagine. Obviously, it does help people. It does help insurance agents, you know, and it, it, it elevates your status. You know, uh, you, you're an author, you know. For sure. I mean, I did it for, I did it for the authority, tr truly. Um, Absolutely. I, I wanted to get my knowledge out there in a digestible tangible thing. I mean, it's pretty cool when somebody, you know, has something of yours tangible that they refer to rather than a website where they can read a blog or, or, yeah. or anything else, listen to a podcast. Um, it's, it's a lot more powerful. And, um, I mean, that's, that's, that's the reason we're trying to build out, uh, yeah, like more swag, you know, and items and, you know, um, maybe a book, you know, et cetera. Uh, because that's just, yeah, I noticed that like people, it, it, when I get a box in the mail, it goes on my Instagram story, you know? I mean, why not, right? It's, and so I think that's the same case for anybody in, in, in anything, you know, so. Yeah, and it, it's, it's exactly what happened. Book came out and people started taking pictures with all my friends, of course, and yes. in the industry and like posting and tagging me and then they kind of like, it was awesome, yeah. That's cool, man. Uh, what, what tips would you give for someone that's really interested in, in, in selling over the phone, whether it's term or final expense? And they're like, they don't know where like, it, they don't know where to get started, and it's not easy, you know. Right. I think. Um, well, first of all, they need to come to the realization that um, they need to invest in leads, and that mm. is just a. Th that is it. You are, you know. I, would, I think. I, would you agree with without leads, an agent is unemployed? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Ex exactly. Um, so that's, that's number one. Don't even hop into telesales if you don't have any money for leads. And you don't even need that much money for leads, especially yeah. for final expense. It cash flows so well. You sell a policy today, you get, you know, for a lot of companies, it pays tomorrow. You know, with a 75% advance, fund your next lead order. About how much money is a good starting point? Like, or at least like a minimum, you know, you got to have this. I mean, minimum, I'd say minimum $1,000, you know. Yeah. Obviously, even then, I, though, ideally more. Yeah. Yeah. Even then, you're like, it's a thousand dollars. If you if they don't like, you know, strike gold or or get good or have a few sales, it's like, you know, where are they going to go next? You know, you don't want to like get somebody involved and then 
there goes a thousand dollars, you know. I, I always tell people, well, number one, find a place where you can get the training. Um, yeah. And there's a repeatable sales process that you can plug into. Anybody mm. can sell over the phone if they follow a process. Um, mm. That is it. I mean, I mean I've mean, i seen you with um, Northstar uh, Remiz. Totally, totally. Totally processed. He can make anybody successful. Same thing. If you have a if you have a process, you can uh, you can do it. And that's what that's what we do at Digital VGA as well. And so we, you know, have the technology and the training that anybody can go in and and uh, and plug into a system and just literally click a button and talk to somebody. Okay, mm. interested or not interested, and just just keep going until you're until you make a sale. And so to kind of get back to you know you, you made the comment like yeah, thousand dollars they might make a sale, they might not, you know, and they they base it all off of that. It's true, like. I always say if, if you buy your first batch of leads and you make a sale or two, that is awesome. Even if you're barely profitable, like yeah. you still have those leads to work. You still have all those follow-ups. They're going to fall in our technology. We can see, um, I mean, it, this is a, this is a cool piece of data where we can, um, see, um, our marketing into, you know, and what, results in sales. So we can take any time frame, and we see every week. So let's just say it took November 1st, you know, um, four days ago and oh, it's, you know, it's maybe like a 1.5% sale ratio. The next sure. week, 1.7, the next week, you know, three months later, six, 7%, you know, yeah. it's just, it takes time. So if you can break even you're like, that's how all the rock stars started. Like you, you made a little bit of money from the very beginning and a lot yeah. of people quit right there. And that's the thing. It's like, oh man, you know, I sold uh, two policies out of uh, my thousand lead order. Dude, you're profitable. Yeah. You know, keep buying. You're, you're, a lot of those other ones are going to pop. So, you know, I, I think expectations are, are um, you know, really need to be set that, you know, it's, it, it does take a while to build your pipeline. And that's absolutely. And, you know, if the cost of starting a business like this is only the cost of leads, come on, man. Like, just do I the mean, work. Yeah, I mean, I, I spent thousands of dollars on cleaning equipment when I was 18 or 19, I don't know, before I started insurance because I was like, I'm gonna go clean offices because I'm a freshman in college playing basketball and I'm gonna just go around and sell people on let me clean their office, you know? And I had to like borrow the money, spend thousands of dollars on vacuums and everything else and then pay it back, you know? But it was like, you can get into insurance for freaking less than a cleaning business, you know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and literally that's the cost of doing business as leads. So. That's my number one thing. You got to have money for leads um, if you want to get in the business. Um, that's good. N nothing groundbreaking, I know. No, no, that's great though. And I love the sales process. I think it's one thing people struggle with. You know, even when they do have leads, they're like, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do. You know, and so I love, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, month after month, the guys I see in the top of our leaderboards, I mean, they stick to the same process every single call. They brain it in, they control the call. They've got great tonality. They've got a great attitude. They're saying, you know, they're, they're hitting their emotional points and, yeah. and they do well. And then, you know, the guys that still, they take a bunch of leads. They, they do well, they're profitable. Sure. They're not as profitable as the other guys, you know, they're winging mm. it. They're kind of going off script and, you know, kind of being their friend. And, you know, you just, you're not here to make friends on the phone. You're here to, you know, guide somebody to a sale. And so, yeah. you know, a, a lot of agents kind of, um, could really use a, uh, like just a, a good sales process. And that, that's what would make them successful. What's your opinion on uh, staying in control of the call, asking questions? Yeah, I mean, so a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of consumers, prospects, try to take control of the call. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, it's a- Do you, do you think that's mechanism. what an objection- yeah, do you think that's what objection is? They're just trying to take control? Yeah, yeah, in a way, for sure. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, so I, I think that consumers don't know the buying process for life insurance when they sign up online, fill out a form online, you know, they just don't know the buying process. Mm -hmm. And because they don't know the buying process, you know, they're, they don't know what to expect. And you're just going to put up your guard until somebody can explain to you that buying process. Somebody you can trust can guide them, herd them to, to where they, you know, to, 
to, to the reason why they filled out that form online. So the fact that there's no, like consumers don't know the buying process of life insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People have their guards up and you got to get past that. You know, that, 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 that's really what it is. And totally. everybody's going to give you an objection, you know, um, yep. until you can show them the process and you can get them to trust you. So. Absolutely. Yep. T t I love that. Uh, you mentioned before uh, five business owner fundamentals of a life insurance agent. I'd like to get in those and, and share those with the audience. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So it's kind of this thing I've been helping um, agents in the business and, you know, specifically telesales. I'm a, you know, I'm a telesales guy yep. and, you know, and, and we touched on it before is, is we are really with buying leads. We are business owners. Um, and the great thing about our business is the cost of doing business is only the leads and a few nominal subscriptions for a CRM or whatever. Right. Yeah. But agents need to start viewing their agency as an actual business. And most mm. agents don't have the business, um, education or experience. And so that's kind of what, what I'm kind of teaching agents. So they can kind of get a, another lens on some of the things that people are saying. So, you know, you know, what, one of the five fundamentals that I talk about is increasing average order value. You go to any business school, you go to any e-commerce or any, any other type of business, everybody's talking about increasing average order value. We don't use those terms in life insurance, but that's really, um, you know, we, we replace those terms and what we, you know, what you can do is obviously upselling, you know, adding writers yeah. or whatever, adding other products or cross selling with Medicare, DI, critical illness, um, anything like that, going for the double spouse sales, child sales, all that increases order value. Something that nobody ever talks about is a downsell. Like nobody's talking about downsells, <laughs> right? But if, if you're an internet marketer, you know what I'm talking about, Cody, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So when somebody tells you no, right? When yeah. they, you know, online, if, if you go online and you go through somebody's funnel and, you know, you don't buy the product, you're in the checkout thing, they're going to try and sell you something else a little bit cheaper or something else that's, you know, might be a, you know, a, a lead into the product that they want to sell you. But, you know, agents can downsell too. If someone says no, offer them an alternative product, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. After, I mean, after a full presentation, when someone says no, most agents give up right then and there. They might try to overcome some object objections. You know, by then you should know why it's a no. You know, is it affordability? Is it trust? Is it the wrong product? You know, the more savvy veteran agents know that this is a time to downsell and talk yeah. about something that they might have hit on in the fact finding process. So, you know, it's, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that because what I thought of and why I was actually laughing at the same time was I started at, uh, at Mutual of Omaha. I was 18 as an intern and I was calling at a, I don't, not a, actually out of the phone book, but it, you know, it was cold calls. So mm -hmm. pretty much uh, they were just, I hope they were scrubbed, but I was doing it for a veteran agent because I was an intern. I was learning and he would have me, the script was horrible, but it was like, Hello, uh, do, you, do you have uh, life insurance? You know, or would you, like, would you like a quote for life insurance? No. Well, are you on Medicare? No. Uh, well, would you like a quote for an annuity? No. Well, how about disability? And it's just like, it was just like the worst downsell ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I mean but, but really though, after a full presentation yes. and, you, and you still get a no, I mean, yeah, there was probably something wrong with your presentation yeah. that, you, you know, your intuition didn't take you to where, um, the, the prospect wanted to go, but you can downsell and you can talk about something else that might be in more interesting to them. So that's what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is, which is, gosh, it's, it's funny. I mean, it just is hilarious. Uh, so, so was that some of the things we were talking about, um, was leads training sales process or were the fundamentals totally different? So, I mean, the fundamentals that, that what I just said was, you know, increase average order value. That's fundamental number one. You know, and it's just really getting those cross sells, those upsells, those um, yeah. down sells down. I mean, that, that, that's a big part of what mm. business owners do and what you're taught in, in business school, um, what you're taught in really any inter internet marketing course um, to do that and just putting it in life insurance agent terms, you know, yeah, it's, that's really what it is for us. And, um, you know, it's... It, it's just one of the fundamentals that a lot of business owners go through. And it's just another, like I said, another, another way to look at 
these things that everybody's talking about and cross-selling on everything. You're increasing your average order value and that's how you become more profitable as a business owner. Absolutely. No, I, I love that. I love that. That's good. Uh, what's number two? So I got five. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get through all of them, but I'm, I'm down to keep going. Uh, number two, lift conversions. So, mm. I mean, Cody, you're, you're probably doing this all day, every day. Um, you know, just looking at everything. How can you lift conversions? Every business owner is looking for a way to lift conversions, meaning more sales yeah. per marketing dollar spent. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many ways to do this. If you're generating your own That's leads good. online and you know, that comes in the form of ad copy, targeting, landing page, conversion optimization. You know, I understand most agents yeah. don't do this, but it's one factor. Every agent generating leads is working on, you know, yeah. for agents that aren't, they're just selling great. Um, the biggest thing you can do is follow a proven telesales process, get out of your comfort zone and adopt what the high volume agents are saying. Um, that's conversion. You're going to sell more of the people you talk to. That's um, good. Get, you know, get more policies you write to place and force. Another, another thing, field underwriting. You know, don't always sell the cheapest. Sell the most convenient. A lot of people don't want the cheapest. They just want to get something done. You know? Totally. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that brings up a good point. So, so, so you, you've, I always think of you as, um, you know, sell term, term life.com, modern life insurance selling podcast. I always think of you as like, you know, historically always selling a lot of term insurance over the phone. Right. So, yep. Um, what would you, what would you say to someone that would say, well, should I sell fully underwritten or should I sell simplified issue? Uh, I would say present both and, um, lean your sales process towards simplified issue. So let them make the choice. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. It, it, Cause I, I, I used to sell, uh, I guess I still do every once in a while, but fully underwritten, uh, term over the phone mm -hmm. and, or at least in person. And I just hated the speed and the underwriting and it drove me nuts. It, it, yeah. It's not fun. Um, yeah. It's not fun unless you have a big pipeline and it takes a while. And uh, we, you know, it, it's a falling off point for agents who want to sell over the phone is because they always go for the cheapest, which is yeah. the fully underwritten product, which takes six to eight weeks to get approved and paid or, you know, and then they're already out of money <laughs> before they yeah. get that commission. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you position it correctly in a sales process, mm -hmm. most will lean towards simplified issue mm -hmm. and, you know, Hey, let's get this done today. You know, we can always cancel this and go with something cheaper later on. Um, you know, and it's, it's, if you position it correctly, you'll, you'll get more than half of your sales will be simplified issue. Wow. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Cause yeah, from an outsider looking in, I was always curious what you were doing, you know, and I didn't know that. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Most of our term agents, um, are positioning simplified issue where, where they can, obviously there's limits on yeah. coverage amounts and everything, but when they can, they're positioning a simplified issue and the market's getting you know better with accelerated underwriting up to a million dollars, even yeah. more in some carriers under certain conditions. It's, um, yeah. it's only going to get easier convenience wise for those term agents. Why is that? Are companies just noticing that, that agents are like, you know, fed up with it or? No, I just think it's technology catching up. That's, okay. that, that's really all it is. Yeah. Good. Good. That's awesome. Well, on, on the technology note, any, uh, any thoughts from you on uh, anything that is, you know, coming down the pike? You know, I super random, but. Yeah. I mean, I went to insure tech a couple months ago in Vegas. Saw that. Um, yeah, it's it's an incredible conference. Um, it's, it's not really huge. for yeah, it's not really for H. There's seven thousand people there. Um, That's unreal. You know, it, it's not really an agent conference, but um, I don't really see any technology in the life insurance space affecting independent agents in the near future. Good. Good. Yeah, I think um, I think agencies and agents just need to just build better process, build their own tech or, or whatnot. Um, I just don't see it. Good. I just don't see it happening. I mean, the, the only thing that you can say is threatening is those buy online products, you know, the, yep. the ethoses of the world and the stow and all them. But well, you just had a buddy that sold, sold one, right? Something similar. Yeah. Um, what, what are you referring to? Well, I don't know if we're, we're okay to talk about it. it was uh, it was, well, I guess so. You, you shared it in your group and, and online. Uh, 
I forget the guy's name. They, they sell med, they were selling Medicare and final expense. And so, you know, so there was like their, some of their site was automated driving a lot of inbound calls and you know, okay. Was- yeah. So yeah, this is, this is um, public. So uh, assurance, yes. uh, assurance.com was recently acquired by Prudential for 2 billion guaranteed, but 3.2 billion with um, you know, earnouts and everything that they're projected to get. And, um, and this guy, figured a couple things out just from his specific knowledge that he gained over the past decade of selling over the phone. Um, and he put it into tech. He, he, uh, he just has this really intuitive system. I mean, it's amazing. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people have heard of assurance. I mean, they yeah, advertise yeah. everywhere for agents and a lot of people yes. might have a bad taste in the mouth about it. I know agents doing really well. I know agents that burned out. Um, mm-hmm. It's just one of those things. I think it's the effort you put into it. That's uh, with anything though. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I think it's a fine system and uh, you know, it's uh, but yeah, I mean, That's but that cool. wasn't really disruptive at all. You know, that was, I, I don't think that would affect independent agents at all. And so, no, no. yeah, it's, it's nothing we can use. It's nothing we can, um, nothing we should feel threatened from or anything like that. Nice. Nice. Uh, um, tell us about, uh, for a quick second, um, digital life insurance agent mastermind. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was in Vegas, right? Yeah. Last, it was, uh, earlier this year in Vegas, we had about 120 agents. Um, it's a two day thing. We're planning our next one for next April or May. And, um, yeah, what we do is we just get agents in the trenches. We're not getting any carriers to speak. We're not getting any, um, anybody that's going to try and sell you something on stage. Everybody needs to provide yeah. value. Uh, we prefer agents in the trenches that are very successful. And so you kind of learn like the ins and outs and really it's just a place to connect with other digital life insurance agents. We're such a small niche and we get, I mean, and people take cracks at the digital life insurance space all the time, face-to-face agents saying how it doesn't work, how your persistency is terrible, how X, Y, you know, and it's just one of those things where we know what it really is. We're all going to hang out. We just have a great time. You know, we, it's, it's basically a two day party with a ton of value. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, That's cool. Yeah. You know what, you know what I love about that is, and, and the same thing for 8% is bringing those online relationships offline, you know, exactly. and I've learned like even getting to know you over the last couple of years, it's, it's been, uh, it's been incredible. The people you meet, you know, because of conferences and events and things, masterminds, things you can do in general. Uh, it, it's just, I'm learning that it is small. Networking is important. I used to ignore it, but man, um, I love, I'm enjoying socializing with other people. I always leave the valuable nuggets, you know? Uh, yeah. I think it's great. Absolutely. Um, I mean, building community is, is everything. I mean, we're, as life insurance agents, we're at home working by ourselves, you know? Yeah. To be able to get with people and talk to people that are doing what you're doing and, uh, and learning from each other, you know? Getting out of that, that bubble. Um, picking up new new skills and new insights is just is worth it. I mean, I always tell people it's not the yeah you're going to get a ton of value from the speakers, but it's those those sidebar conversations where somebody is just going to leave you a nugget and uh, you're, it's just going to change the way you do your business. Absolutely, yeah. Well, what's your uh, for those that have interest in joining the Facebook group? Is it is it is it, is it, is it is, are people able to join if they want? Yeah, yeah. It's the digital life insurance. Yeah, digital life insurance agent Facebook group. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. You can confirm while we're on here. Just yeah. Confirm, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I was thinking that because I actually I'm in it. You know, I see I see things every once in a while, and uh, again, and I think it's great. Yeah, digital life insurance agents. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Telesales, sales, tech, and online marketing. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. I love it. I love it. Uh, what, what what's something that uh, because I'm I'm a big um big proponent of only eight percent succeed. Um, and there's, it's a tough industry, you know, if you had a chance to like speak to someone that's, you know, we, we get this, will happen a lot. I get messages every day of an agent that's like, and you probably do too from your podcast that they're like, I'm struggling. I'm thinking about quitting. Um, you know, I'm in my first three years, I'm not making any money. You know, what, 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 what's some helpful tips or some motivation or something you can do to, to help that person? Yeah. So, I mean, when, when somebody's struggling, <laughs> I said this at the last mastermind um, and everybody laughed. Um, I think people get in the way of themselves. Um, I think, I think mindset's a lot, but I also think that if you've tried 
a bunch of different things where other people have been successful, there's something that you need to address within yourself. Um, you may not be cut out for this, but you could be cut out for this if you can just get past a certain hurdle in your mind. Um, I mentioned therapy. I don't ever recommend it. I don't ever say some struggling agent that emails me or gets in touch with me, go to therapy. No, I don't say that. But there's things you can do. I mean, there's coaches. There's, there's so many different ways to overcome that because people want to be successful so bad. I can hear it in their voices. Um, and if they really want to be successful, there's obviously, I mean, if they haven't made it work in the next, in, within two to three years, maybe they haven't found the right platform. I might refer them to somebody who can make them successful. Yeah. Um, or, you know, it, it, if, if I was having a conversation, I would probably bring up, you know, I'd probably dig in and be the therapist to them <laughs> and say, Hey, yes. there's something blocking you, man, because it's a certain type of person that succeeds that that's in the 8%. And right now you don't have that. You just, there's something blocking you there. Mm. And, uh, and, and that's how I see things. I think everybody, most everybody has it within them to, to be successful in this business, but there's something there that's stopping them. You know, maybe, maybe they don't do the activity. Maybe they're too scared to invest in themselves with leads. I, mean, I, I, I don't know, but there's something there. It's typically the first one. Yeah. Typically one of those two things you said, that's yeah. good. T yeah. Totally, totally agree. Yeah. Um, you know what, the power of like events and getting around people and, and, and being able to pick up knowledge and learn. Um, we both, um, Trey Soar, who's in the, your Facebook group. Yeah. We both met him, I believe, at Insurance News Net Chicago, right? That's right. Yeah. Crazy. The power yeah. of events, man. Yeah. You know? It's good. Uh, in, in, anything in closing you want to add? Um, anything you want to mention? How, how, you know, if there's something you want to, any tips you want to give, how can they follow you? They can buy the book on Amazon. Any final thoughts? Um, no, I mean, we post a lot in the digital, the Facebook group. So digital life insurance agent, telesales tech, online marketing, um, ask any I'm a questions creeper, by the way, I'm a creeper. All, all good. I mean, ask questions. I mean, uh, I'm there to answer questions in there. Everybody always yeah. emails me and everything. And, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to get, there's a lot of successful agents in there that are creeping too. And they're just, you know, they will help. There's a lot of totally Danny Ray, of, uh, Danny Ray. Danny Dude, I love always, that guy. He will always pay it forward. If, he doesn't he, even know it, but I'm like his biggest fan. I love well, him. Well, you're, you're, you're going to see him in San Diego if you come out to the mastermind. Good. So, I'll yeah. be there. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, but there's, there's a lot of guys that just will pay it forward and they're waiting to help somebody because they were all in that position at one point too. And so, yeah, I'd say the Facebook group, if you're just kind of interested, you know, in, in telesales, I, I would start there. Um, you know, and then there's, there's a lot of different routes you can go. Uh, but you know, yep. need, need to know the situation. Totally. That's yeah. good, man. Dude, yep. you are an absolute influencer and thank you so much for being on brother. I uh, appreciate you, Cody. You got it, man. Hey, thanks for watching insurance influencers where we bring on someone every single week that is influencing and helping our industry so that more agents can be a part of the 8%. My good buddy, Jeff Root, go follow him, join his Facebook group, grab his book, the digital life insurance agent on Amazon and I always listen to his podcast, the Modern Life Insurance Selling Podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Appreciate you, buddy.